which is a chap has come down and uh, if everybody was so supportive of the night, uh, yeah, I'd probably have retired. <laughs> so uh, let's let's give him the credit that he deserves. Uh, I don't actually know. It's probably Tommy, but I can't remember. As the next act, he knows who he knows who it is. Have you done many gigs before? I've never done one, mate. Oh, it's brand new! For fuck's sake! So we got to go through the same thing again. <coughs> the Green Cross Code, man. What did he say? Stop, look, and listen. Stop, look, and listen. There you go. Even if you have to stand at the fucking pedestrian light for ten minutes thinking, fucking hell, when can I cross? <laughs> right. You've got to stop, look, and listen. The Green Cross Code, man. That's the bush. Code, okay. I've uh, probably got his name wrong. Uh, is the first word begin with the first name begin with a T? The second one uh, sounds a bit like something you'd put in the gun. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not wrong. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I got it right. It's Tom Cartwright. <laughs> Hello. It was great to be forming in Friday here, which it does. I should work in an up and coming and um, rather posh town not too far from here. You might have heard of it. It's called Bridie Hill. And when I say posh, I actually mean it's that rough that not even Ross Kent would go there. I've kind of been uh, allocated 10 minutes to perform tonight, which is at least 9 minutes and 40 seconds longer than what my wife is used to. Some of you blokes, so you do us no favours with your godlike in you man stamina. Yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Honestly, I've been trying to improve my but it's really, really hard. Ooh, about 13 seconds. <laughs> I've even started masturbating more recently, as I read it's a fantastic way of enhancing your stamina. I have, yeah? But my wife, she's not pleased that I've been wanking off to other women. <laughs> so I've started fingering my arsehole instead. <laughs> Well, I was actually convinced that I have a sexual preference to men, but after keep telling her, babe, I chose to not be gay. And she's like, you can't choose your sexuality. And I'm like, well, fuck off, because I did. <laughs> Honestly, I chose not to be gay, only because I'm so insecure about the state of my bum hole. <laughs> Honestly, trying to get past all the piles and all the hairs that surround and occupy my chocolate starfish. <laughs> it's like trying to compete in a sexual version of Takeshi's Castle. <laughs> Is anyone else out there bored of Brexit? Yeah. yeah! Honestly, it's been the longest thing in the news since Trevor met Donald's penis. <laughs> when I point a finger at me, I just want to confirm that it's not a racist comment because my wife wishes that I was a black man. <laughs> I just want to confirm it's not a racist comment because it's a fact Trevor met Donald has got a massive penis. <laughs> he really has. But uh, talking about massive penises, I wish I had one. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it though, the size of my penis is actually the uh, national average for a woman living in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm just, I'm not a shower, I'm not a shower. If my wife actually didn't name it the other day, the grower. Yeah, the grower. I was over the moon when she gave that nickname. No one would have felt insecure about standing in the urinals next to 10 inch Terry. Because I was a grower. <laughs> I even signed up to the local gym, not to work out, no, fuck that. Signed up just to prove I was no longer too shy to stand naked next to Nine Inch Nathan. Because I was a grower. Some random bloke uh, would look at me and what what's that? It's alright Keith, don't worry. It's a grower. And one day me and my wife uh, was out with some friends. Had a few drinks, got a bit tipsy, got a bit of a braggadocio. I was like, Hey babe, babe, honestly, tell them all, tell them all the nickname you gave my penis, tell them all, tell them all, go on, tell them, go on. She's nicknamed it the grower, yeah, the grower, you love it, don't you, babe, you love it. Oh, from stump to tree trunk, you one sort of hand movement, yeah. And then she, she couldn't, she couldn't let me have a moment. She ruined it. She was like, babe, I don't call it the grower because it ties your penis well, so it's erect. I call it the grower because it looks like you're growing a friggin' pubes farm down there. <laughs> now shut up, you little hairy tramp. <laughs> it's nice thinking kind I of had a big penis for two days. <laughs> I was 
started to uh, learn French again recently, but my mate Tony, who I know I can trust, because he's got a teardrop tattoo on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, uh, he said, you might as well quit, mate, it's pointless. Honestly, it's pointless. I saw an advertisement on the side of the bus the other day from the Brexit party that said the first thing they would do if they uh, got into power is ban European languages. Ban European languages? It was extreme. Well, um, I'm not gonna lie, I think that'd be a brilliant idea. I do. Because it means that Nigel Farage would they be known as Nigel Farage? <laughs> be careful what you wish for, Nigel. Well, uh, yeah, like, like any other educated man, I do genuinely believe that uh, any statement on the side of the bus is a uh, reliable source of truth. <laughs> Let me prove it. When the last uh, when the last Star Wars film has been advertised, there was a statement that said, "Easily the greatest film of the year," which I'm sure you would agree is a factual statement. If you're a 46 year old bloke, he said, "Ejaculates into a sock." <laughs> Oh Princess Leia! Oh Princess Leia! I can't even leave my mic enough right in front of my mum. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Princess Leia. 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 Princess Right, calm down, Jedi John, 46. If you want to find a woman that was considering letting her brother finger her, you want to go to go to Tipton. <laughs> I'm only joking, the women from Tipton wouldn't consider letting their brothers finger them. They just bloody do it. <laughs> Honestly though, uh, referring back to what uh, Tattoo Face Tony was telling me about, I would be a little bit gutted if uh, European languages were banned because uh, I actually used the art of French language when I initially introduced my wife. A little bit like this. Bonjour, madame. Je m'appelle Thomas. Et tu? Piss off. <laughs> ah, piss off. Are you Russian? <laughs> I'll be rushing off from you in a bit, your way, though. <laughs> ah, flirty. Moi, et tu? Mon chambre. Le Tour de France. <laughs> we didn't do the Tour de France that night. But like a sense that uh, never expected such beautiful fluent French from a man who looks like he cooks wheat to mix in the toaster. <laughs> don't just it before you've tried it. Just a record, I don't actually cook wheat mix in the toaster. I'll go for the more economic version. Wheat bisques. Yeah, those who know you gotta love the Audi, you gotta love the Audi. What a turnaround Audi you've done, honest to God. Was it just me? But when I was at school, one of the most offensive things that someone would have said to you was you're so poor, you'll find you be Audi, be on an Audi in a cardboard box. <laughs> Ouch. The thing about insult is, you didn't care that they said you lived in a cardboard box, she was more offended it happened to be behind Audi. <laughs> there was a comeback though to this, and there was. Well, you're so poor, you'll find you live behind, so you'll find you in a cardboard box, behind Lidl. <laughs> How about you, wanker? <laughs> It's absolute madness so that there's kids out there bullying their peers purely because their parents happen to shop at Audi or Lidl. The thing is now, it's, same, it's now the same kids who can't even afford a mortgage to live behind Audi or Lidl in a cardboard box. <laughs> there was one more discount supermarket that uh, did trump Audi and Lidl for being so hideous that it genuinely ruined, uh, ruined children's lives. If it became common knowledge that their parents shop there, you may have remembered it. Neto. Neto. It was only Neto! Go on, you know, let's, let's, let's face it, if your parents shops at Netto, you definitely took a bath in the canal. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the severe consequences of being seen at school with an Audi bag? <laughs> Sorry. There was one time that my mum truly did me over in this field. Yeah, I remember that, you little ginger hobbit. <laughs> Yeah, the one time she uh, she packed my swimming shorts and towel within an Audi bag, within my rucksack, and had little to no opportunity to identify this life-destroying moment, because the first lesson I had was swimming. So here I am, in the middle of the changing rooms, a full capacity changing rooms. So I start to uh, pull out the bag, none the wiser, talking to my mate, probably about something gangster like, uh, what Pokemon I caught my Game Boy that morning? <laughs> Thanks for thinking out, I've got the bag at the Apex. My eyes lock on. 
I mean, sheer panic, my palpitations, I can't believe this evil predicament that I'm in. I just cannot believe it, I'm sweating, I'm shaking, I cannot believe it. And then there's some scrawny prick in the corner called Sean, who points at me and starts laughing. <laughs> you scrubby twat. Happy <laughs> bag, wanker! And, you know, I've got the whole changing rooms pointing at me laughing. Oh, insults coming at me from left, right, and centre. Howdy, bag wanker. <laughs> Let's love the tramp. There's no place like home. Unless that home's behind Audi in a cardboard box. Honestly, they're all laughing at me. I can't believe the predicament I'm in. I haven't been this humiliated since this recurring dream that I used to have. Where I'd be naked in a random public place, other than for a t-shirt that was about nipple length. I spent the whole dream just trying to bloody pour it over. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. McKenzie. <laughs> Honestly, absolutely humiliated. It was so bad that even the chess club lads was pointing at laughing at me whilst I was wearing Y fronts. <laughs> oh my god. Unbelievable. And I've been Tom Carroll. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Come on, give it up. Take a bow, Tom. Yeah.